No. That really used to be the thing. Like, anybody who knew me, you just know. Because the alcohol just always made me, like, think about, like, waking up and not remembering something. That was, like, the fear. Yeah. That was the fear. Going to sleep, like, thinking I'm going to bed <laughs> normally. Waking up to realize, nigga, you are in a puddle of your own vomit. <laughs> Yes, that is not your bed frame. That's a curb. Yes, that ain't an alarm, nigga. Those are cars, nigga, driving past your motherfucking man. You passed out. <laughs> I was like, oh, hell no, fuck drinking. You know, I don't, I don't want to wake up like that. I don't want to fucking wake up like that one day. For real. I done heard too much real shit at a young age. Like, my mom... I was I went to Alateen as a kid. Alateen is for fa- is for kids affected by alcoholism. Mm. So my mom went to Al Anon in the next room while I was in Alateen in the in the far other end of the room of the church while the alcoholics was in the middle room. <laughs> Jesus. You know what I mean? And we was all in there sharing and, and growing and the alcoholics had the best snacks. So we used to have to go in the AA room to get the best coffee, get the cookies, <laughs> get the cookies, run back to the Alley team meeting uh-uh. with Miss O. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna explode, blow her shit up. But Miss, 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 she was the best, a sweet black lady mm-hmm. that you could just tell all your problems, anything that happened to you, yeah. and she just like helped you go through the book and helped you process your emotions and she was just like encouraging you to share if you was new she was super gentle with you didn't press you to but it's like she was like mrs claus if you could personify and imagine a female that a black woman or elder black woman that reminds you that fit the bill for mrs claus the most innocent older woman that's her she for the kids in that way so, and she got her own. Of course, they grown, they successful, and she's still giving back type. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, bro. <laughs> I was not with that drinking shit because I heard stories. Yeah. I heard, I will, when you walk in to get them cookies, you ain't walking straight out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you hear some shit. Yeah. You hear a motherfucker like, my daughter said this to me today. And you like, God damn. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And that you don't break the anonymity of anyone. You don't tell what goes on at these things. But you hear shit in this. You just learn that it could be way worse than this. And I don't need to feed that path. I don't need to seed that path. Mm-hmm. I don't need to build that that pathway to destruction. Yeah. Even if I don't have it, mm-hmm. if I ain't there yet, why 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 create it? Yeah. That was the other thing. Like when I went to AA as an older child, that was my choice. Of course, I was trying to do it to get my mom to feel like I really changed and she wasn't gonna put me out, but she still fucking went through with the, you know, I ain't want her to fucking press charges on me. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to be all goody goody. I'm like. I'm going to go to AA because they think I got a drug problem at this point. You know, you smoke one blunt. Your mom found out you smoked a blunt before. You got a drug problem now. She found one picture online of you smoking tea. Tea. Trying to act like it's weed so you could take a good smoking photo because you thought that's what you needed to have on your Facebook at that time. And your cousin want to swipe your through your Facebook next to your mother. Mm-hmm. Nigga got no boundaries. And now your mom see you got smoking and she don't even know that you smoking tea on the side of the house just to fucking impress the fucking Instagram when it first came out. (laughs) I ain't even smoking weed, ma. But I got a drug problem. And this is why my anger is... (laughs) My parents be like, yo, you mad? And you smoke? Before you got a drug problem, <laughs> you can't be. Don't slam a door. Don't come in the house late. Slam a door, and they smell weed. Mm-mm. It's over. Mm-mm. 
it's over. Your problem is the problem. You know what I mean? You smoke weed, and that's it. That's the issue. That's the issue. You know what I mean? Like, uh -uh. oh fuck! Like, it's so weird hearing these people talk about how legal this shit is now. It's so weird. Cause I grew up where weed was like you had a drug problem. I'm all treated it like you was on heroin, like you was going down the road. <laughs> you going down the lazy river of like just addiction. And substance abuse. And you'll never make it back. It's over for you, you druggie. Your pie head, your stoner. You want to do that? You want to waste your life, Ronnie? <laughs> and I'm like, yo, I experienced weed at a time and point in my life. And I tried to act like I was still smoking. Because I wanted people to not know that I didn't have enough money to get a lot of weed. I only got one little piece of weed. Got to hit that one that one day. We split a twenty dollars worth of weed back then. We split that. We was high shit for the month. It felt like. Oh gosh. But I didn't have no more weed. But to keep people thinking I was still smoking. Let me bust that tea out real quick for the gram. I've never heard of anybody smoking tea. They're not going to know. Everybody who smoked tea will never tell you they smoke tea. Let me just tell you. <laughs> Motherfuckers have smoked tea before. Niggas you know have smoked tea before. I believe it. Just to see what happens. Uh-uh. And don't nothing happen. It's just some shit you really shouldn't be inhaling in your lungs. It's like the same as smoking paper. It's like really bad for you. But it's like... You thinking it's herbal... Uh -uh. You see, and that shit, look, you see, you see herbal on the back. Stop. Look, they say sleepy time. You think, oh, shit, I'm about to hit this, go to sleep. Stop. This tension table right here, this shit gonna make me mellow. Uh -uh. She gonna chill me out. <laughs> nah, all that shit do is get in your eyes and make your eyes tear up. You feel like your eyes is burning off your face and melting out your out your face, so you just start crying. <laughs> My mom ain't see the tears in the photo. Uh -oh. oh, she saw it was the smoke. I'm like, mom crying because that's not even weed smoke. That is paper and tea burning my eyeballs off. I can't even fucking woo. <laughs> like, bruh, don't nobody know what's going on in life. See what I'm saying? People just be talking, and they don't tell you what's really be going on, <laughs> what they really be going through. Niggas be smoking tea, and I told the same nigga I smoked weed with the first time. Mm -hmm. I I told that nigga I smoked tea, and the first thing he came out of his mouth, nigga, I did that shit before too. <laughs> so I said, okay, I know what's going on with this. It's a it's a tea smoking society out this motherfucker. What? Every nigga our age has tried it to see what happened. If it was an if it was gonna be enough to get him. To his next blunt, he hit it to see if it was going to work. If it was going to be satisfactory. And that? it was not satisfactory. And tea burns different. <laughs> it burns different. So when it's ashen, like I'm telling you, this shit burns so different. So you could be smoking some tea, right? And it's hot orange right there. If you just move too quick. That shit could fall all off and it's hot orange stars all over the place about to burn the holes into your clothes. Just raining down. If you fucking pluck that motherfucker too quick or you ash it too wrong or you tap, tap, accidentally tap some shit. You know how much shit I done burnt up smoking tea? And I wasn't smoking bags and bags of tea. Like, <laughs> chill out. Bags and bags. I was, you know what I mean? No. You put it in it to see. It's a tester. You trying to see what works. Because you ain't get... Like, the thought back then wasn't... All right. Because you didn't know what you did. We smoked weed, but we wasn't, like, aware of the fact that we just made a fucking drug deal. And we could go to fucking jail. Yeah. And this niggas out here with pounds and all that. We wasn't thinking about all of that. We had just, like, found a way to... Gotta get our hands on a, a bag of weed. Like, you see what I'm saying? It was like, it was a process. It took a long time. It was a, we had to plot and plan back then. 
to get to con- how you get the connections. You got to talk to a side of the family that is okay with their kids doing shady shit and all that shit. You know what I mean? Back then. Like, yeah, that kid, I know a kid who got more freedom. Who got more freedom? That's what it was. Whatever kid parents let that nigga do whatever he want, he was the connect, the plug. He got everybody whatever they needed, whenever. If you knew him, you was good. He was busy as a motherfucker, though. And they had basketball practice. He had basketball practice. He D1, but he also got all the drugs that you need. D1 and got all the drugs. It's like, I don't know how he performed at this level. This nigga got straight A's. No, straight B's. Like, just to let you know it's real. <laughs> nigga got straight B's. All the drugs. And he D1. And he just, he be balling at the rack after school. Mm-mm. And you can get the drugs off him right there. What in the world? You know, I went to a middle school where the, it turned, like, it was a rec center. The gym, it was a rec center on one side, and the gym and the school was, con- the gym and the rec center was connected by the, I mean, the school and the, the rec center was connected by the gym. Gymnasium. Wow. So we shared a gymnasium with the rec center. So a lot of kids just stayed after school and went to the rec center. Yeah. I ain't even gonna go down that road. Oh goodness. Oh god. I ain't gonna go down that road, man. I ain't gonna go down that road. It's some shit you discover just missing your bus. You like, oh, this shit different over here after the, <laughs> after yeah. hours. Mm-hmm. Yep. All I did was miss my bus uh, by a minute. <laughs> Who is that nigga? He don't go to our school. <laughs> and I'm like, why is he staying? You be staying like that? Mm-mm. These niggas can't. I used to. I, like, I couldn't understand them niggas. How you like basketball that much? Soon as the bell ring, this nigga is putting his motherfucking <laughs> book bag down. <laughs> Dropping his shit. Oh, he already on the court. He dropping his book bag down, and the ball is in. Somebody just passes him a ball. He just catches his ball and shoot. Bong, bong, bloop. I'm like, what is. Y'all niggas is addicted to basketball. Y'all love basketball that much? I couldn't understand that shit. I was like, these niggas love basketball, bro. Yeah. Like, you playing it after school like that? Like, like it's not basketball. Like we had, ba- they had basketball practice and shit. I'm talking about niggas who like, un- before practice. This is practice is later. Practice. This is after school. This is after school. Like you niggas is eating pop tarts right now. You see what I'm saying? Niggas is eating pop tarts, drinking they Sunny D's and shit. They Capri Suns, popsicles and shit. Niggas is running and raiding their cabinets right now, and you, is at the rack, still with your uniform on. Cool. Balling. Cool. I'm like, why do he love basketball so damn much? You see what I'm saying? Like, it was crazy, bro. It was mad therapeutic, though. Like, shit you just, you just see and realize. Yeah. You know what I mean? Growing up. Where we grew up, bro. <laughs> shit wild, bro. <coughs> I got off a topic. I forgot what I was talking about. <coughs> I don't know what got me there. But I think what got me there was um <coughs> I ain't even like yeah the the beginning of me like the beginning of me was like I was just I was just was like I don't know I was so different I mean everybody say they was different but like I don't remember, like, having a lot of friends for a long period of time. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And it was because it was, like, I was so different. And when I say different, it's, like, I mean that all the way up. So, like, my family's different. You see what I'm saying? My household setup was always different from other niggas' household shit. Mm-hmm. So, like, niggas be like, yo, my grandma this, my grandma that, my aunt, my, my cousin this. Like, that's a they lexicon like that's in a mental rolodex like that's right on hand 
Like, they just was with grandma. Grandma live here. They know where their house at. They be there. They go there. Everybody frequent each other. And I, I just grew up with my mom and my stepdad at that time. Like, it was, I didn't have nothing else. It was just us. My brother wasn't even living with me. Yeah. <coughs> so it was like, it was just me, bro. It was just me and, like, I would go to school. But I, before that, I went to before and after kids. So that means I get to see a, a bunch of kids that go to mad different schools. And we are basically in daycare together. Can you imagine that? Having to be in a van an hour before your school start because you dropping kids off at their schools. Or they go to mad different schools. Uh-uh, I don't know. You don't got to be in the van. They like they they figured out the system eventually. Not all before and after cares know the system though. Mm-hmm. Until you get to a good a good like I've been through some shit is what I'm saying. You go to some places they don't know, so you got to take a long ride. But then other places they they have staff mm-hmm. so that until your time you know you don't have to ride with these motherfuckers unless you're going with yeah. them. You see what I'm saying? Like yeah. until their business really succeeds. <laughs> So before and after kids be small, bro. It'd be a real loud, just a lady in her crib. And there'd be people, like, she got eight people dropping their kids off, though. Like, she got seven people Mm-mm. showing up at different times throughout the day dropping their kids off. In the world. Nigerian bitch. African ladies. The African women at that time used to come over and just watch people kids, bro. That's and they'd be on the phone all day. They don't even watch us. I was never watched. You see what I'm saying? I was cared after. <laughs> you know what I mean? If I had to pee, I ain't shit on myself. You know what I mean? I, if I was hungry, I could eat something. This bitch used to make... I, I had a Nigerian babysitter, bro, who used to make burgers. Just the patties, and that was it. Like, she would just give us burgers, bro. Like, she would... I'm telling you, she would put the burgers straight on the pan. Put them in the oven, take them out, and put that bitch on a paper plate and hand it to you. And I could get ketchup for dip, my nigga. No bread, no nothing. Bruh. (laughs) Bruh, I'm telling you. She gave you It took me a while to learn that I could ask for more things. (laughs) And even then, it's like you got to catch her because she on the phone. She on the phone talking in Nigeria or whatever her language, whatever her... Is it French they be speaking? I think it's... I don't know. French, whatever, whatever her language, her native tongue, she's speaking her native tongue. She's just on the phone. And I'm just like, bruh, can I get in a question? I'm hungry. And it's like, you got to push it through. You got to stay on that I'm hungry. You got to be on that I'm hungry like you on it, like like you're not disappearing. Because you come up there... You the first time you you just think you're gonna just tell her you're hungry and just she's gonna make you some food and you're gonna, you know, no, <laughs> no. Last time you said you was hungry, you ended up hungry till your mother came. Damn. You forgot you was hungry. So I'm saying you forgot you had to, you ain't know you had to remind this bitch. And at that time you a kid, your mom here, you just thinking you gonna eat when you get home, so you don't care. It's not like you are gonna tell nobody. Oh. See what I'm saying? So, you learn. You go up there, that bitch got the news on. She locked in, bruh. She got the news going loud. She on the phone. So, you, you got to fight the news, the phone call, and the fact that she is in her native tongue. So, she not really thinking about English right now. So, what you saying is sounding like wah, 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 wah in the background. So, you got to, like, get through to her. You got to be like, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Like, you got to... And then you gotta wait for her. so she like if you run or if you walk away, she not gonna be on it. But if you still there, she it will like remind her, and then she'll be like, "Oh yeah, you hungry, right?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And then she'll get up and go, um, right in the kitchen, bro. I'm trying to tell you, on the phone still put them up, and she made plantain before too. But she that was it. That was all. That was the only remix she did it was plantain one time. She gave us plantain and a burger patty. Shit was crazy, bro. I don't know why that shit was so satisfying, though. Like, it was enough. Uh-uh. I ain't never think nothing of it. Water, milk, and a fucking patty. That was what she gave us, bro. A and patty. ketchup. A 
Betty. But you can ask for bread type shit. But that was like, I ain't even think to ask for no fucking bread. Yeah. Because uh-uh. as a kid, the kitchen is kind of invisible to you. This is somebody else's kitchen too. Damn. So it's invisible to you. All you see is your place. Where you sitting, where you supposed to be seated. Like, she got papers and shit in there, you know what I mean? It's like cluttery house. It's a... <laughs> so I'm like, I, I, I get my meal, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm chilling, I'm lit, this is lunch. Like, I remember realizing that I made lunchtime. It's not that she wouldn't feed, because it, it was me, and it was like, so so it, it wasn't like she didn't feed, you know, because it was younger kids there, you see what I'm saying? So she took care of the babies, yeah. and that was it, though, because the babies, you could take care of a baby and feed a baby while you're on the phone watching the news, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Everybody else that took real shit, like, we was on our own, <laughs> <laughs> and this is <laughs> Y'all used to hate the two hour delays at this bitch house. Jesus. Two hour delay, bro. Two hours. Not at her house, bro. You got a two hour delay at home, but nope. I gotta go to work. Damn. Too young to be home with myself. My mom was so worried that I was going like it's because it, it was it was against the law to have a, a kid. I think it's like you gotta be thirteen or something. I think so. So it's like she, my mom, by the book, she not playing that shit. My ass could not be at home, and it it, it didn't take me to it didn't take it, it took me a few years to realize that my brother had ruined ruined that. I thought that I thought it was because of me or something like, and I learned later that it was like. She by the book, but also, nigga, she don't trust you because <laughs> your brother <laughs> really blew it for you. So she think that you going to do some shit, too, if you was ever here by yourself. Mm-mm. I would never been the kid to have parties and all that shit. Yeah. You want to know why? Because my whole life I've been the nigga who is, I watch everybody do shit, and as soon as I try it, it don't work. So I ain't, I would never do that shit. I'm the last nigga you got to think about. That's why I got so much integrity. Because I better have fucking integrity. <laughs> I can't try the shit everybody else try. <laughs> Y'all can try that shit and redeem yourself. Get away with it. Come back. <laughs> Change your life. <laughs> My shit fucked up. You know what I mean? My shit ain't like that. <laughs> My shit. Uh, my karma be like smacking me before I do shit. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> and I be like, damn. I didn't even know I was evil. <laughs> they be like, yeah, you evil. You ain't evil yet, though, but you evil. And I be like, bro, that ain't right. Ain't no way. Ain't no way in hell. Now, if this was T, this whole car would explode. <laughs> Cause that shit would have went into particles. It would have went <laughs> everywhere, and it would have melted through the car. So, uh, <laughs> don't say that. No, it burns out fast because it's so like nothing. But it's just it's very dangerous. It's like very hot for uh-huh. uh for it's like it's like powder. It's like flammable powder. Damn. So it doesn't ash well. Yeah. See what I'm saying? It doesn't ash well at all. It just fucking. It's very dangerous. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you realize how much of your clothes is plastic. <laughs> you thought you had 100% cotton? Nah, nigga. You got 100% plastic. <laughs> uh-huh. Your shit about to be plastic. <laughs> you ever try to fix a hole, a burr hole, by just, like sticking it together while it's hot? No way. <laughs> Man, your pants look like they got a hem, like they got a stitch, but it ain't no stitch, it's just stuck. Uh-uh. The dryer ain't never melt your clothes before. The dryer done melted some shit before. I don't think so. Maybe it's because I got cheap shit. But not even that, though. I think it's the, uh, it's not even melted that. It's the thing that they melted was the tide. 
the Tide Pod. The little pods sometimes don't even fucking oh, yeah. dissolve in the fucking washer. Yeah. And then they go in the dryer and they turn into hard plastic and it sticks your I've clothes. Seen, I've seen that. I don't think it's happened to my clothes specifically, but I've seen it. <sighs> that shit's a dumb motherfucker. That's a bitch, man. Because it's almost like when the soap gets to the dryer, that shit gonna turn to cement. <laughs> So it's like, you better make sure that shit washed all that shit out, man, because it's fucked up. Mm. Hey, that's the story of this podcast, man. I never stay on top of you. <laughs> but I was, a, you know, I grew up going to before and after care shit. That shit... That shit makes you different, bro. Yeah. I don't even know what I'm saying. Yep. Before and after care. Before and after. So now I'm getting in a van. And y'all yeah, know what that's associated with. <laughs> I'm just, just so glad. I was just praying one day. Like, because you had to pray. That these motherfuckers don't get the bright idea, get some money, and get the bright idea to buy a short bus. Because <laughs> if they get the idea to do that, it's man, so you got to get on the short bus after school, you might as well be retarded. <laughs> on your, You might as well have that on your shirt. <laughs> Not you pulled up in the in the short bus and you getting out on it, back on it, to go home. <laughs> they don't never see your parents. Your kids don't. Your kids don't even believe you got parents. <laughs> They're like, them niggas got a bunch of caretakers in their life. Them niggas ain't got no parents. That's a short time. <coughs> <coughs> so every day you go out there, <coughs> you see that goddamn van. <coughs> you grateful. <coughs> you hate it, but you like at least it's a van. You know what I mean? At least they ain't got us in no fucking bus. You know what I mean? Because if they pulled up with a different, they own bus. We'd be fucked. Because them buses found a way to be cheap about that seating. Because you can have a short bus with 15, 20 motherfuckers on it. Damn. Niggas will, niggas will find a way. Niggas in Mexico will find a way to fit some motherfuckers in the car. Trust me. Stop. Especially for some money. Stop. No. Jalen. Stop. If the nigga need a ride, if, a, if a, I know I've been in the car with a nigga, right? I've been in the car with a nigga, right? Where he just started giving niggas rides while I'm in the car with him. He taking mad money from random motherfuckers because they need a ride real quick. All of them allegedly need this ride real quick, and he's getting this alleged money. All of them. All of them. Random people. Like he, this is before Uber. <laughs> this is before I even knew of an Uber. <laughs> this nigga is the goat. A legend, and I be like, bro, I gotta get out of here because you don't know if this is a real ride until it's over. You don't know until it's over until we get to this alleged destination. It's a legend to me. Because this is all off track to where we supposed to be going. This ain't got nothing to do with us. <laughs> I don't know you doing this. Like, why are you doing this? He just, I'm like, damn, he that type of nigga. I guess he a nice nigga, you know? To give niggas a ride if they need a ride, but like, damn, bro. It's it's odd when it happens in multiple times. You start realizing these niggas got a hunch. These niggas like driving for money. <laughs> so then they just start finding ways to fit mad people, though, in cars and shit. You ain't never seen a big black family go somewhere, drop everybody, everybody got to get get somewhere at a certain time. Bruh, everybody will get in that motherfucking car. We dropping grandma off at the other, at, at the, at the, at the, uh, ICCC building. And then we got to take Nene over to the shelter. And then we got to take Ricky to go to his first, first day of school too. And then Shanene and her two sons got, oh. like, everybody got to go somewhere and they about to drop everybody off. <laughs> Accordingly, and then you gotta wait for grandma to get out. You know, grandma take forever, and the niggas be arguing while grandma getting out the car. Who gonna take her seat and shit? And ain't nobody taking her damn seat because the oldest girl gonna fight and beat the shit out of anybody anyway. And she's gonna fight her way to the front. 
Is she gonna get and sit right here and dictate the conditioning and the radio? You don't know about life. Like that's the thing about that before and after care shit. You get in that motherfucker. The DJ is the is the is the is the is the, is the nigga. So I used to not want to sit in the front because that's like some teacher's pet shit. But then it's like, why I sit in the back where it's stank and stuffy and it smell like ass and hot after school ass? Like, god oh, damn, oh. I gotta get up out of here. Like a hot box of ass. Like, fuck the <laughs> back. Ass. Fuck the back. And then it's like, if you in the back and somebody do something, you get in trouble because they just assume it's because it's, everybody's in the back. Everybody in the back is is the bad. You know, it's like a bad stigma on the back. Yeah. So I get out the back. And then I started to realize if I sit in the front, Ain't nobody going, everybody can see my moves. And they know I'm not up to nothing, even if I am. <laughs> and I can interpret and have a little dictation and have a little say on the radio. You know what I mean? I get to, you know, kind of slide my opinion in there a little bit and get to steer the stations. A little, you know, every now and then. So it's like you get in the car. In the van after school. In the van. In the van. And you gotta hit the radio. You gotta get the right song. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Then it's like it's like you feel like you like taking care of everybody. Like you got everybody good. Then it's like the weird shit is sometimes when you gotta go to another school after you get out of school, Jalen. You gotta go to another school to pick up a kid. After you got out of school, you still in a van. Out sitting in the parking lot of a school, bro, waiting in the line for this kid to get in the van. And it's always the dumbest one who don't know where the van at and can't find the van and don't go with the process and never go with the flow enough to, to do shit right. So this nigga, we got to find him. And it's the hottest day, of course. And all you got is the radio and the van AC is some shit. So it smell like hot ass in the back. See what I'm saying? The windows don't fully open. It's them little fake windows that you can just push out. So they just pushed out. They ain't open. You can't roll them up. Or that shit just push out a little crack. Uh-uh. <laughs> you can vent this bitch. <laughs> but you gonna hotbox that ass. Ain't <laughs> Ain't nothing else you can do. You gonna hot box this ass. I'm talking about 10, 13 kids. In a big ass van. Life sucked, man. (laughs) Y'all don't know about life, bro. Don't. Don't let you get to the thing and they talk about some homework. First thing I say when I get there, I ain't got no fucking homework. You talking about homework? I just did my homework. I did my homework. I sat in traffic. I ain't supposed to be in no fucking traffic. Everybody know when you get on the school bus, traffic don't exist. Exactly. Why the fuck am I in traffic after school? Let's go. She done, of course, took the keys out like she ready to go and didn't, 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 didn't actually do nothing. But um, Cause I never got to experience like adults work, mm-hmm. but I always knew adults had to deal with traffic and driving and just getting home and getting places going, getting going back and forth and doing shit was just it was it was work still. <laughs> so like, you just being bored as fuck as a kid, hot. 
uncomfortable still in your school clothes. I'm talking, you're in your school clothes and it's dark outside. And you're just getting in the car with your parents to go home. Oh, no. I'm talking, you have dinner before bed. My mom got the nerve talking about you going to bed at 830. I said, what? (laughs) So you want me to just sleep here? That's it? That's all I can do here? That's all I can do in my house? (laughs) Is sleep? (laughs) From young, though. Y'all don't know about this. Life. (laughs) Niggas played in their house. I could not play in my house because I was always somewhere. Because my mom had hours that was crazy. Like, she got to be in D.C., right? From We was living in Maryland. She got to be in D.C., which is basically an hour and some change drive. She got to be there at 7.30 in the morning. That's where she got to clock in. You got to clock in at 7.30. That means you got to leave at 6.30. Where can you take a child at 6.30 in the morning? You can't just leave him at home and trust this nigga to go to the school bus and do like all the other kids. You could. You could, but she ain't not that type of parent, I guess. My stepdad was gone before us, too. Jesus. Didn't he get home later? Did not. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, I barely seen the man. <laughs> this is my life, man. This is my life. I'm not making this up. You can't make it up. <laughs> this nigga didn't only work at the same place my mom worked at. He also worked at a homeless shelter. Oh, Full time. So, I mean, after work, he's there. All night. Some of the coolest shit is hanging with him because you get to stay up. But it's fucking boring, again, because you in a fucking homeless shelter and you a damn kid and you ain't homeless and you with the nigga with all the money. So you run around all these homeless motherfuckers and they love you. They like, hey, what's up, Ronnie? Hey, hey. Like, they love you. Like, they, they look at you like the young goat. You the son of the prophet, Muhammad God. You know what I mean? Like, they scared to offend me and shit. But that's the other thing. Some niggas used to say a little slick stuff and then I, you get to hear them, how they really act. When I'm around, you know, they think I only pay attention. Like, nah, I see how y'all act when I ain't, when my stepdad ain't around. Yeah. It was it's weird, man. It was like a little classism little thing in there. You know, when it comes time to serve food in the shelter, I got food first before all these they made all these homeless men sit down <laughs> and wait. Jail and I ate. I got my food. I was sitting there eating, and all them niggas had to wait. You know what I mean? They talking and shit, doing the little talk, little prayer. Then they do the prayer. Then them niggas get. Then they get to eat. They got to get in line and all that shit. They got to. Da, 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 da. And I can keep eating if I want. I can keep eating. I can get more. I get seconds, thirds. And the craziest thing is, homeless people that's working in the kitchen. You know, the healthier ones who get who actually doing the program and they got jobs and shit. Mm-hmm. These motherfuckers is trying to load my plate up. They want to spoil me. So it's fucked up on both sides. <laughs> I got to give him the tray, too, to wash my shit. So I'm just like a fucking asshole, you know, but loving it. And and kind of built to, to love it. Like... Like that was that was that was a weird moment in my life when I was like always in that shelter eating and just stunting on niggas. <laughs> I'm talking about niggas had to have one juice. I had four or five juices, which <laughs> whatever flavors they had. Niggas would come give me shit while I'm sitting there. Uh, not you got every single flavor. Like I'm running a prison, <laughs> but I ain't locked up with y'all. Y'all talking about Mayor of Kingstown. (laughs) 
That shit was messed up. It was messed up. It always felt like people just wanted to encourage that type of success from doing what that was. You know what I mean? That that type of work. So it was just like all around, everybody encouraged it. Like we, my stepdad pulled up in a Cadillac. Nice joint. He kept up with the with the he kept a new Cadillac. Kept the newest one. Nicest shit on the block. Uh-uh. He in front of the homeless shelter with the caddy. Talking about um, some nice men even park up there because they be breaking in cars and all this shit. Like, come on, bro. Uh-uh. We walking. I'm talking about I'm seeing rats in the shelter. You ain't never been in a homeless shelter at 12 at night. It was your stepdad is working on a sermon. On the computer, he's writing a sermon, and you're just in the room while he's writing. He's just in the shelter while he's writing the sermon. There's another room with TV, and the, and the TV is not even entertaining. You're in a whole shelter, so you're running through all the rooms and shit. You know what I mean? You're looking at the motherfucking libraries. Is, you know, they got office buildings. This shit look like, you know, this shit look like a fucking, this shit you see in a movie. When you go to, like, the White House. It look like the White House in some of them rooms. Cause it's like a big desk, a big table, you know, the, the fancy chairs, and like bookshelves and just books and shit. Window, big window. Some of them shits was like rooms was. So I'm saying, I'm like, they making the sit. They doing, <laughs> they doing business in this motherfucker. I don't know what y'all talking about. Uh-oh. Y'all talking about Jesus? <laughs> yeah. I, uh-uh. It just seemed like, whoo, man. It was rough, man. And then, like, I just, I knew I could go in the rooms that them niggas could never go in. See what I'm saying? And then I used to sit in the bullpen. So niggas used to see me with them eating in Bible study. Okay. And then on Sunday, I'm in the bullpen. And it's like, I come out all, it's all, it's so, it's just so, so ritual. You, It's a room before you go on to the bullpen. And it's like a saint, it's like a very, like, it's the room that you go in right after somebody died. You know what I mean? It's the room that you go in before you get baptized. It's like a room. Like, it's like a real sacred room. And that's what we at every Sunday. We ch- Like, that's the room we at. Yeah, you know I mean? We be in that room. That's crazy. I'm, my mom mad at me in that room. How you mad at me in that room? Like, we had beef. Me and my mom squashing beef. Trying to squash it a low key just to get through and be... It's a room, bro. You, you come out the room, everybody waiting on you. And they playing music as you come out. Come on, bro. We walking past the piano. Like, we going on a stage. This is a stage. All these people coming in, they all sitting there. They all got to, they all looking and they hoping I say something to them. And I'm like, I don't know none of you niggas, man. Uh-uh. Look at these niggas. It's like, it's like, uh, I'm just not, I'm not going to be waving this shit. I'm a kid. Like, I'm not waving at you. When I was a kid, I used to tell my mom somebody waved at me. And that's what I did. And she'll tell me to wave back. I don't, I'm not waving at a damn stranger. My mom raised me like, my mom raised me unmolestable, like. I swear to God, like, I like if it happened to me, I swear to God, it had to be like I really <laughs> had to be like he, I had to be drugged or something like they had to like had cut a part of my life out and just made sure I don't remember it. You know what I mean? Like it's like I had to like it had to happen and I just had to have blocked it out completely. Like I have no way of knowing, you know, because because it, it would have to be like that yeah. because like how she raised me was like. I told her, like, every time, like, she used to keep asking me, you know, if somebody do something to you, you can tell me, right? And I'm like, Mom, I will have, I will, you, I will have, 
it in my hand. Like I will have whatever general in my hand to show you if somebody tries something. You know what I mean? She do that from young. I said that shit. Mom, I will bring you the, the genital of the person that did it. You don't have to you don't have to keep asking me. Oh my goodness. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, so it's just like, because that's the thing though. You got to be kind of like that. You in a shelter or them hours of the night, you know, tell me who could be I mean, they're not supposed to be places. There are cameras and shit, but these people are unstable sometimes. A lot of these people sometimes got mental illnesses. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Addiction issues, trauma and shit. So, me being on my P's and Q's is like, I'm the perfect kid for this shit. It sounds fucked up, but... In a fucking homeless shelter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if you gotta be there, yeah. you don't wanna be, like, you think I wanted to be there? No. It stinks. It's, from the minute, from the minute you walk in, it smells bad. It's never been, it never smelled good in there. Let me tell you. Nothing in there smells good. Not a chair in there smells good. All this shit stink. You leave there, your clothes that you wore smell good when you went in there stink. My mom doesn't even like taking the clothes in the house that we wore when we was in the shelter. My stepdad used to bring dishes home. My mom used to, like, throw them dishes in the trash. My mom used to think we was bringing bugs in the clothes, like. (laughs) But I'm telling you, that's just what it was. Like, you, you adapt to whatever your life is. This is your life, so you have to deal with it. Yeah. And it's like, how, what what conversations do I have with kids? I have nothing in common with nobody my age, bro. I don't, even, I don't have a PlayStation. I don't have time for that. <laughs> sadly. I sadly have no time for that. <laughs> I'm busy as shit. I don't the shelter. What was you doing Saturday, Ronnie? I don't, I don't want to tell you. I was feeding the homeless. Oh, you was feeding the homeless? Yeah, I was making lunches. Making lunches? Yeah, I was making sandwiches and putting them in baggies. And then putting that bag in a bag. And putting snacks with that. And putting apples with that. And bagging and rolling up the bag. And taping that clothes. And then putting that with that. And putting those in that. And then taking them to the parks. And having homeless people faking and trying to play me like they ain't already get a bag. And they trying to get another bag out of me. And you got to get up out of here because these homeless people ain't shit. And they that great. <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> these niggas ain't grateful, man. We going to another park. Because when you go, some of these niggas is not nice. They be like, yeah, and we, we want steak next time. We need to have lobster. You were like, what? We ain't never coming back. <laughs> fuck you, nigga. Basically, in Jesus' name, you know, we ain't saying all that. <laughs> we never said fuck you and all that. We just got, God bless you. We got to go now, kids. Come on. Don't give them another sandwich. Don't give it. Look, look that's when the old lady started letting them, let, just go ahead and give it to them. Yep. We got to get up out of here. Wrong park, wrong day. Wrong park, wrong day. <laughs> then you end up walking with a bunch of sandwiches. You guys just walking with a bunch of sandwiches down the street to go to another park? Because that's how DC is. Uh-oh. Everything connected, you can just walk to it. Walk to the next park, and they nice as hell over there. These homeless are people so grateful. These are the grateful people over here. Niggas are just like, oh my God, thank you so much. We like, here, you can have another bag just for being a good person. I used to, it's like, I used to, I used to call myself, like, I used to call myself, like, the discerning shit. I'm like, yeah, if you ain't a good motherfucker, I ain't giving you extra nothing. You know what I mean? Like, I used to have little extra little crackers or shit, you know what I mean, on the side. Like, I'm like, I know I can get, I just go through sprinkling blessings on some people because I know they're good people, you know what I mean? But if you allow 
asshole in the park. You mean and shit. I see you cursing at people. I see you kind of bullying people. I ain't giving you shit. I hope you don't get nothing but water. Because I was Christian, you know what I mean? I didn't want you to die or nothing. But I want you to somehow fuck your own self up so you miss the, the sandwich run. Ain't no more sandwiches. We run that, we ran out. We only got water now, nigga. You better find somebody who's nice enough to give your ass a sandwich. And I bet none of these people gonna give you the sandwich because you mean as shit. What in the world? And then it's like, this because some homeless people, they too, home, like they committed to being homeless, so they know the system. They know this, uh, they know that we coming. And they they talking shit while you handing them the sandwich. Like, uh, the other bitches gave us tacos, so this is some bullshit. But okay, <laughs> you be like, what? <laughs> Excuse me? Like that's when you see your your aunt or somebody, the, the older lady at the trip. Be like, what you say? Excuse me, sir. You need <laughs> you know she get to get into that shit. And then she gotta you know we all gathering up. We gotta get up out of here because these ain't the good homeless. I remember my stepdad gave this dude a ride, right? This homeless dude. He stopped us while we was at Wendy's, right? We got out of Wendy's drive through. He stopped us while we was at the light. And um he was like, Damn, I'm hungry, like I wanna go to Wendy's. Like, but I ain't got no money. You know what I mean? My stepdad said, Alright, I ain't gonna give you no money, but I give you some Wendy's. He was like, I right, bet. So he gets in the car with us. My stepdad goes back to Wendy's. Gets this man a meal. And gives him some money. You know what this dude did? He dropped him right back off. Right there. And he said, thank you. That dude ran right across the street with that money. To the liquor store. And got some beer and alcohol. Right there at the before the light turned green. Like fuck the burger. Nigga took off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he it was calling him. Like that's all he really wanted. Like he was willing to go through the whole thing to get the money. Cause he knew like he had to do something. Cause this this dude wasn't just gonna give him some money. <coughs> like he was willing to like, he was so down for the scam. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. This shit crazy. So, I done seen shit like that. Like, up close, real shit. Like, I have real experience with life that, like, as a kid, you know what I'm saying? People don't have. All the funerals I've been to as a kid, just because my stepdad's a minister, you know? It's like, you don't think about that. Like, religion is so big, but. The people who run those things, they have family too. Mm-hmm. The people who <laughs> sing in the choir got family members too. The people who play the piano got family members too. The people who do everything in the church have, you know, they have family. Yeah. So, they got lives. And they got kids. And you got to grow up sometimes. Like, and you talking about like, Anything you want to talk about. Anything you want to talk about. I have to like. Get. I have to like. Make sure that my parents don't hear. What we talking about. Like this ain't. This ain't something that I can like. Take back home and tell people. You know. I had to like. Learn things and keep it internally. I couldn't. Even ask certain questions. To to understand things that I've discovered. Because. For me to have that question means that I already did something wrong. Mm-hmm. I've already sinned. I've already I'm on the evil path anyway. So they're not gonna help me understand that because I'm just gonna use it for bad. You see what I'm saying? So it's like this idea that I don't need to know anything because if I know something, I'm gonna use it for bad. But you're going to before and after care, learning from other kids and seeing what bad actually is. Because these kids is bad. I'm talking, bro. Like I said, you get to before and after care, you think you're talking about homework? You get to the door, you're talking about homework after that? After you just sat in traffic? 
waiting for this kid, this dumbass. He finally gets in the fucking van. Now you can go there. Now you get there. It's kids running the fucking muck. This nigga done rented some office space. And now he got... And then you realize the people watching you in high school. You thinking these people is grown. These motherfuckers is in high school. So my crushes ain't even that bad. I'm over here crushing on them, liking these bitches, and it ain't even wrong. Because they just in another school, for real. They was just at school. My dumb ass ain't even know. You don't know these bitches is just at school because they work. Your work to them is as, as, as a breeze. They like, nigga, come on, sit down and do your colors. And you like, no, fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. I ain't doing no homework. And she like, man, what was the cat plus the dog? You know what I mean? Hey, she just like, you know, you doing your homework while you fucking off the whole time because this teenage bitch is going to take care of you if you're really nice to the staff. Like, you can get in good. You, I used to suck up to them when I cared. But when I didn't care, I just stopped caring. But when I cared, I sucked up to them. They'll do your homework for you. Yeah, the bitches will do your homework for you. The high school bitches at the before and after kid will do your homework for you. If you're nice to them, like if you make them feel like they the best staff member. No, for real. And then if you don't don't let you tell the, 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 the boss that. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They'll do your homework for you in a second. And then you can play quicker. So it was always like if you finish your homework, you can play. So it's like we trying to play. And he can't bring out no game system until everybody done their homework. So you be in that motherfucker mad because this little four-year-old can't get the two plus four and you 15. You know what I mean? You know 17 times 16. You know what I mean? You like, what the fuck is going on? I got all this energy and I'm waiting on this little kid to answer the apple. What does that A stand for? Like, come on, motherfucker. You don't know? Then you get in trouble. You get, see? So now you get in trouble for fucking with this kid while he trying to finish his homework, you ain't gonna be able to play anyway. So you better just let this motherfucker figure it out. So you sitting there with all this energy. So it's, uh, that's when it just, like the, the program didn't really work, man. So <laughs> the kids, like we just used to do whatever the fuck. At, when, like at the beginning, the program, I used to work with the program a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I used to do my homework at certain times. It was certain times like when my parents started putting pressure on me about my grades and shit. And it's like my parents cared about my, It's so weird how they cared about my grades but didn't teach me shit or help me with my homework. You know, how you care about my grades? And then as soon as they find out I skipped one class, they're going to assume they're going to they get now they get an out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Plus, <laughs> and plus I'm smoking weed. So I'm definitely failing because of that. I'm definitely failing because of that. I'm smoking weed. I'm, I'm smoking weed. I'm skipping class. This is all connected. Yep. And they mind. And I have a drug problem. I'm going down. Don't I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, this is like nothing. Y'all don't even know what's really going on. The problem ain't even what you're talking about. If you put all that energy on the actual issues, we would be a family. That shit crazy. They don't deserve all this bother from me. Man, Rondo Show Podcast, episode 120, man. More coming, man. Peace.